I'm Jessica. I lead the customer team at Tulip, which includes our customer success and professional services team who work with customers to deploy, sustain, and grow their use of Tulip on the shop floor. As a quick introduction, my background is in discrete manufacturing. So I started out in aircraft engines and landing gear with GE Aviation, did some direct production management, but really spent most of my time in manufacturing quality engineering. And after that, went into consulting, primarily focused on manufacturing operations. In my four plus years at Tulip, I've worked with dozens of customers. And at this point, my team has worked with hundreds. So I'm here today to talk about governance of Tulip as a composable solution at scale. I'm gonna say that one more time. Governance of Tulip as a composable solution at scale. What does that mean? I'm going to start with a summary of the reference to a composable solution. I'll touch on at scale, but then move on to governance, and that's where we'll spend most of our time. So when I say a composable solution, and I will say that because Tulip has done webinars on this and we have articles about this in our knowledge base, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail because we could spend hours on composable solutions. But composability is a concept to be aware of because it impacts your governance needs. A composable solution is focused on creating a network of solutions for specific business purposes, or what we might call solutions that are built for purpose, as opposed to monolithic solutions. So composable solutions are flexible, they're human-centric, so they cater to the needs of a specific end user at a specific point in a process. You think about your shop floor, different workers on the shop floor need to see different things to do their jobs at different points in time, potentially at different locations. They also may need to enter different types of data. And we really focus on making sure that these solutions can cater to what the actual humans need where they need it. On to the second point, at scale, this is pretty self-explanatory. We're referring to multiple sites, could be as many as many dozens of sites, usually across multiple geographies or globally. So on to the last bit where we're gonna focus, governance. Governance is a broad term. When I hear people talk about this, I always try to pause them and break it down because governance can encompass everything from strategic data structure and system of record decisions to content management decisions like ensuring the digital solutions on the shop floor are proved to be there or defining processes that allow citizen developers to build solutions they need while still following global standards when global standards are applicable. So there's a lot wrapped up into governance. I'd be thinking, why is governance important? Governance is important because it's going to drive the machine of digital transformation. If your company is looking to drive change to the way it typically does business, you're going to need a governance structure to help push progress, identify, escalate, and remove roadblocks, and also to ensure compliance within your organization. Governance is what will help you build a citizen developer program, particularly one that's global, with standard trainings to ensure people have the necessary skill sets, and also to set best practice sharing and provide oversight to what citizen developers can and maybe can't do. So ultimately, a strong governance structure should support efficient use of your resources, but also faster time to value in your digital transformation. Tulip has a framework for governance, and there are multiple categories in it, and that's where I started on governance as a broad term. In our framework, there's one category for a center of excellence concept that we refer to as an adoption program because we want Tulip users to adopt Tulip as a tool for their digital transformation. So I'm gonna use the term adoption program, but if you're familiar with Center of Excellence, you can think of that in your head. An adoption program includes how you set up roles, responsibilities, processes, and policies to facilitate digital transformation across levels of the organization. So we're talking about all the way from potentially C-suite level sponsorship down to the shop floor folks. There's another category in our governance framework that's focused on platform content governance and platform being the tool platform. How to think about versioning your app solutions, approving changes to them, defining which app solutions are used in which part of the plant, et cetera. So I'm gonna focus on those two categories. Getting more into the adoption program side of governance. At a high level, as I mentioned, adoption programs are a center of excellence. So they have to have top-down support but they also need the direct involvement of teams on the shop floor because those are the folks who are using solution, but also the one experiencing the change as digital transformation is introduced. Like a composable solution, an adoption program should grow and evolve with your organization and digital transformation. So that means you don't need every role and structure in place on day one. You don't have to worry about reorging before you can start with a composable solution by any means. It's something that you want to start thinking about, and we'll get into timing later. In an adoption program, a few key roles to consider thinking about pretty right off the bat are at a centralized level, adoption program managers or COE leads. 
This is typically a centralized role, meaning it's someone from corporate or some central team that has access to decision makers, but also who helps prioritize work for the folks involved in a tool deployment. They can also help define processes for how people make decisions, as I mentioned, approvals earlier, and they ultimately run the digital transformation program. You might also consider having central level technical resources that can support sites. So many of our customers use an OT, so operations tech, or advanced manufacturing team as the central team starting point because they've already got a technical centralized team who could support a TULIP deployment. But there are also other options to this if you don't have a team like that or are trying to build one. Going from central level to site level, TULIP always advocates for direct site involvement in any deployment because it's their shop floor. They know their manufacturing products and processes best. At the shop floor, you want people who can be change agents. So you're looking for folks who can be directly involved and understand the value of digital transformation, or at least learn it. We also advocate for the involvement of a role we refer to as process owners. So those are folks who are experts at the process that's being digitized. Often this is a manufacturing or quality engineer. It really could be a supervisor. It's possible there are other folks. But we really want to make sure that the people who know the processes and the pain points and the potential value of digitalization are directly involved with the deployments themselves. One last concept to consider when you get to a multi-site deployment is the concept of a community or forum. So this is where, say, your manufacturing engineers or your app builders from different sites can share what they're working on they can provide updates on, say, new tool templates a central team might be working on and is, and is potentially planning on sharing out with the sites. This is a space where folks can come together and problem solve and share maybe thoughts on certain processes that need improvement. But you need someone to run it. And this is where the concept of an adoption program or a centralized adoption program manager comes back into place. You need someone to run this community or forum. And once these are off and running, people get a lot out of them. Monthly forums are very common. This all goes hand in hand with defining how people will communicate in a structure of an adoption program across centralized levels and site teams. I'll end the bit on adoption programs there. Again, we have slide decks and templates on this that we can get into more if you're interested. The second part of this that we'll talk about is platform governance. So a few concepts here that I mentioned previously but briefly are versioning app solutions, the ability to approve changes. So all of these are types of content management. There's also user and access management. Tulip is a software system. We have all of those concepts. Tulip has a fairly large list of user roles with various permissions combinations. So there's quite a bit that you can do with how to manage user access and permissions. At a strategic level, we recommend companies think about a governance structure that includes who will act as administrators, who can build and edit different parts of the Tulip platform, and how people request access. A lot of our customers with existing access request processes just use their existing processes. It's what they use for all their systems. Tulip is one of those. We always also recommend having app owners or the concept of an application owner the way you would have a process or SOP owner. So I again refer back to if you have manufacturing engineers, a very standard setup in discrete manufacturing is that individual processes or pieces of hardware have technical owners. Right? So an app owner follows that concept. If you have that concept, the concept of who owns a tool app on a certain process or product line, it follows. If you don't have that and say you have a group that owns all of the processes in a plant or all the products in a plant, you can address this with process and just make it explicit and define a process for how ownership for specific tasks related to updating or managing tool apps will be defined within your centralized group. So if you flash this forward from user setup, say your teams are getting through app solutions, deploying them, and you're not on to sustaining and improving them, which draws analogies to me on the improving control aspects of the DMAIC framework, if you're familiar with that. Tulip has versioning and approval workflows built into the platform. So there's functionality that facilitates this, and there's information on this in our knowledge base. So there are articles and screenshots for what all of that looks like. Now, that was probably a relatively quick overview of two governance topics. So if you're now starting to think about when should I start thinking about governance? If you're a current customer, it's never too early to start. However, typically once customers are past an initial deployment of Pilot, that's usually when we start to focus on how to programmatically scale Tulip. Again, you don't need your whole COE or adoption program created on day one of the deployment. If you're a future customer, there are probably some basic concepts you want to understand for how your company can deploy a composable solution with a citizen developer model. 
So there's a base level of understanding you need, but you don't have to define an entire adoption program with roles and responsibilities. It's just the initial roles to that you need to get started, such as technical owners. We refer to process owners on the shop floor, app builders, and potentially a COE lead. Tulip has frameworks for an adoption program and examples of how this framework evolves over time. So feel free to reach out. We'd be happy to think through this with you. It's important to your success if you pursue shop floor digitalization with Tulip, and it's a workshop that we run with quite a few of our customers. I want to end with the point of just because Tulip is a composable solution with a flexible data structure does not mean it's a giant free-for-all. I came from regulated industry and aerospace and defense and completely understand the need for a certain level of oversight, the ability to approve quality plans or work instructions, and have consistent ways to collect data. Tulip has functionality to do those things and to enable large scale change across your shop floors, there's a certain level of governance that's going to have to be driven through processes and policies outside of the literal software platform. Pretty standard. Again, there are lots of platform capabilities that Tulip has developed to help our manufacturing community figure out governing their digital transformation. So in summary, with a composable approach, which was starting small, scaling over time, you can empower teams closest to the product and processes. You can also take a programmatic approach to digital transformation. You can define government structures that enable faster time to shop for value. Managing eventually, hopefully, global teams across multiple sites in a way that is sustainable and facilitates continuous improvement. That's the end of this session. I hope it was helpful and stay tuned for more.